Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll be showing you how I painted this snotling from my Blood Bowl team, and the process I used, I've used on all the members of the team. So, if you can paint one, you can paint them all. I batch painted these together, really quick to do. I used some simple techniques that took about six hours to get them all ready once they were primed, and then all I had to do after that was base them. And if you're interested in picking up a Snotling Blood Bowl team or any Blood Bowl teams, please check out Firestorm Games and a big thanks to them for sponsoring the channel. You can find all your Blood Bowl gear there, books, cards, dice, boards, and loads of teams, and stuff for all your other games too, not just Warhammer or Blood Bowl. They've got Star Wars, Dungeons and Dragons, you name it, they've got it. So I'll put a link down below. Be awesome if you could check them out. Hey, let's get started. So here's my snotling that I'll be using throughout the video, and I primed him with a grey paint. This was a Vallejo paint that I did through the airbrush, but you could use anything, any kind of spray, like grey or wraithbone will do. And the first step was to take some contrast militarum green and I'm going to go over all the whole face, all the areas of flesh all over the model. And don't worry if you get any mistakes or you make too much of a mess at this stage. There's no problem because we can tidy up um, when we go through to the other steps. But most of these models are all flesh. So this militarum green gets lots of use. I'm going to do a nice even coat all over. Notice I'm not completely flooding it with paint and I'm trying to start and end my brush strokes where I want most of that paint to build up. And there you can see that's got a nice even coat now. So we let it dry thoroughly. That's really important before moving on to some dry nurgling green. Now this stuff's really cool. If you haven't seen this before, it's quite spongy when you put your brush in there. And so it's not runny at all. It's got really nice texture. And so I'll take this dry brush and then I'll work that paint into the bristles on some kitchen paper, try and get off as much paint as I can. And then I'm gonna dry brush over the model. Now at this stage, I don't want this to go in all those recesses. So I'm being very careful, especially at first, so I know how much paint comes off my brush. And I'm gonna pick out all the raised areas of the model and I'm going in a downward action. So just from the top down to the bottom. So I keep those shadows underneath and in all the recesses from that militarum green. And I'm just letting the model do all the work for me, catching those raised areas until I'm happy there's enough on there. And then certainly on the head from the top down, I might do a little bit more and on the nose as well. And on those toes too, let's get those toes, give them an extra highlight, why not? And there we go, you can see that's transformed him somewhat, it's lightened it up, it's picked out those raised areas. And then you can see the difference from just Militarum Green to then the dry brush with that dry Nurgling Green. That's made a really good difference and certainly changed the look of the skin. No reason why you couldn't just keep it Militarum Green, but I think for the time it took to do these, that dry brushing step's worth it. Then I took some layer Kislev flesh. Now you could use any flesh color really that's not too dark. And I'm gonna do a little bit of dry brushing with this on his belly, on his nose, and just underside of his ears and mouth. And being very careful around the ears, just hardly any actually, most of it's going on the belly. Now I picked a smaller brush for this and I've hardly got any paint on my bristles. I've really worked it off on that kitchen paper. And I'm taking my time building all this up in layers and I'm going underneath his nose and then working to catch the end of that nose and just building it up. You know, this is probably the bit I was the most careful about with all the models because I didn't want it to be like too messy and I just want to give it that definition between the flesh color belly and nose and the green. And so I did a few steps after this as well, maybe two or three goes at it with the dry brush and then you get a really nice effect. That I think works well for the time it takes to do it. Next I took some contrast Magos purple and this is for this little puff ball that he's going to throw. This explodes in the game which is awesome and I'm just going to give that a nice even coat. All the grotlings are different, uh, snotlings, they're not grotlings, sorry. All the snotlings are different. They, some of them have got mushrooms or toadstools, some have got horns, catapults, all sorts of things. But you get a couple of these in there so I'm just going to include that in the video as I go. So one coat is all you need. Then I thought I'll go for a blue theme. So I took some contrast frost heart and I'm going to use that for all the cloth areas of the models. I'll also do it if they've got any hats or any little bits of cloth hanging off them. And I'll do two coats of this. So once this first coat dries, I go over it with another coat because I just found it wasn't quite as rich as I wanted it to be. But you could use any blue. Next, I took some layer pallid witch flesh. And now I'm just going to go over the teeth and the tongue. So I'm just picking out the bits that stick out, 
just trying to catch my brush on those so that I keep some of the definition and shade from the Militarum green. So just picking out those areas of teeth just so that they stand out a little bit and also preparing that tongue for some nice pink that we're going to put on it later on. These are quite small and fiddly, so I'm making sure I move the model, not myself, get my arms braced on the table so I've got lots of control and then I can not be shaking and I can really get in there and get these details done really neatly. This is so important for the eyes. I hate painting eyes, so I'm going in really taking my time, just doing a dot, trying not to paint the circle, but just catch the raised area of the model. Next, I took some Contrast Griff Hound Orange, and when that completely dried on the eyes, I went over it with a nice amount. Didn't go flooding it again. That's like a misconception with contrast paints. You don't flood the model with it, and so just put enough on there to get that nice effect. Then I took some Contrast Yandan Yellow, and this is going to go on the eyes of the puffball. I used this for the bounce hoppers as well, and so picking out the different eyes like that in that different colour is going to work really nicely. Contrast Volupus Pink, I love this colour, this one is going to go on the tongue, so just a little bit on there and I'm just going to paint that on the tongue there and that's going to make it stand out really well. So nice easy steps, again we're just going for tabletop ready here and I think some contrast and dry brushing, you can't go wrong to get some really cool finishes on these models. And that is literally all there is to it, we're all done, the snotling's ready to go, I've based him here with some Vallejo mud, I've put some flock and grass on there and also some some little meadow flowers from Gamers Grass which I think finish it off really nicely. I'll do a separate video on that later on so you can see how the bases were made. And here's the whole team on my shelf, really enjoyed painting them all. The only one I didn't like doing was that pump wagon, horrible to build, didn't enjoy painting it, was very happy when that was finished. But of all of them, this is probably my favourite, the turn marker. I think this little dude's got so much character, awesome model. And here's the pump wagon. I've still got to do a little bit on the metal work, but for now it's fine for tabletop ready. This one I liked how he turned out, so much character with that hopper. And this guy, he's not sure what's going on, just carrying his mushroom around. He's barking the orders at everybody else. And then we got this guy on stilts, which is just hilarious. So what a fun team to play. I've took some of the models that should go on the second pump wagon of the set and turned those into linemen. So I've got loads of bodies to throw at the enemy now. I love all these little accessories, the coin, the balls, so much fun. I love mushrooms. I have them every day for breakfast, so it's a great theme for me. And I've got a tree man that I'm proxying as a train troll. And of course, Acorn the Squirrel, he's going to come on as a star player in the league later on as well. Can't wait to get him on the pitch. I've been having a great time getting these ready and played them in their first game, which was awesome fun. I've also done a video on their cards as well. So if you want to check that out and see what the board is like for the Snotlings, the card pack, which I was really impressed with, actually. Great job on that. And the dice, some really good dice. So that's a bonus too. But yeah, great fun project. And hopefully you've enjoyed this video and give you a good idea how you can get your Snotlings painted really quickly. You can also paint grots like this and goblins so i think this is a nice quick easy method but thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed the video if you did like it please hit that like button subscribe for more videos like this one and don't forget to hit that notification bell too to join me here next time on tabletop skirmish games i'd like to say a huge thank you to my patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible and if you're interested in joining the community it'd be awesome to see you there and i'll put a link for that in the description down below